lectures because uh, history is repeating itself. My father is in my class. <laughs> so, aap pehle aap padhate the. Thank you. <laughs> Papa ne bahut padha hai. Aaj meri baari hai unko kuch padhane ki. So we were discussing this uh, post-colonial things. He was asking actually. He is a literary scholar, literature enthusiast, and uh, he keeps on questioning what are the latest trends in literature. Because when he was studying, there was no Google. Today we just have to write any word, any line, keywords, and we get the content. We get the book, we get the pages even. When he was studying in BHU, I think Papa, uh, 30 years ago, 32 something. He was in 79, he was pursuing PhD in English literature from BHU. Jaha pe koi graduation nahi padna chata tha us time. 10th pass, lot of people, they could not even qualify 10th. He was pursuing PhD. And how hard he has, uh, you know, gone through in his life. He told me, kabhi quilt nahi tha, razai nahi thi, to ek lalten ke sahare pad ke puri raat nikali. And uh, like whatever he has done is amazing. And uh, why do I remember all these lines and quotes? It's because of him. He keeps quoting Shelley, Keats, Wordsworth, and that's the reason that uh, we three, me, my brother and sister, we have maximum quotes on our tips. When we would play this kind of Antakshri, when we played Antakshri in the light jane pe, our Antakshri was not having filmy songs. It was having quotes in Hindi, in Sanskrit, or in English. We played on both. So this was the reason that we have a lot of quotes. It's all because of him I came here. He would ask me to qualify net, karo, net karo. And uh, I would just answer saying, aapne net qualified dekha hai kabhi? We come from an area jahan pe net qualified English mein nahi hote. So wahan pe ho jate. But he had a dream that I'll be teaching in some college, university. And I will think that, is it me only to teach the university? There are thousands of better people to teach. What do I have? But it was his dream. My mommy ko bolta tha ki papa ko mana karo yaar. When you see net, 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 you can't do it, it's not my level. And uh, today I'm going to teach him net level. <laughs> so guys, <clears throat> today's topic is uh, very exclusive and we're going to discuss the post-colonial literary theory, theoretical terms. Concept is key terms in post-colonial theory. The very first thing is that how many of we have the idea what is post-colonial? So I have developed a very easy example that will make you understand the difference. What if you have your house, you live as you want to live. We do have certain habits when we are all alone living in families, roaming around in shorts, throwing things here and there because we are not being observed. We are not forced to behave. What if somebody enters your house, somebody comes to your house and starts ruling you, governing you. He makes you follow him, his rules, his ways of living, his likes and dislikes. He decides your food and he hates your own choices. You say, I want to sleep in left side. He says, no, this is inferior. You have to sleep at the right side of the corner. And he forces you to do so because he is having a gun or maybe he is powerful. Now this goes on for three, four months. After three, four months, you are reluctantly following him. You have no other option. You have to follow because you are totally controlled. After three, four months, he leaves you and goes away with your same house, same furniture. And you try to rearrange your furniture, rearrange your house once again as it earlier was. But now you feel that you do not belong to the same house. By force, you have been changed in the next three, four months. Now you have the same house, you're trying to get it. But you also know that you have been changed. You do not belong to this. And moreover, as you kept on resisting the change, you do not belong to the changed house also. Where are you? What is your condition? That is called the study of post-colonials. Here, you got colonized by someone. They gave you thoughts. They gave you perception. They made you like things. They made you dislike things. They made you feel inferior. And then they left you in between. And you are in a condition of 
flux, you are still not sure that where do you belong exactly. Now, let's take it to the facts. We Indians, 1498, we were discovered. Then, approx 300, 200 years, we were ruled. The British Raj, which ended in 1947. And now the India of 2018. Independent, free. We fought for our independence. What's the difference between the India of 1498, India of British Raj, and India during 2018? Where do we get the real Indian culture, real India? 1498 was the real India because we did not have any extraneous influence any external influence. Then for next 200 years, a history of atrocities, tortures, through colonization, they made us think, they made us behave like them, they made us feel that we are inferior. And that feeling got deeply rooted in our hearts and we have got a culture of comparing things on the basis of black and white. We were told that you are the brown men, black men. In 2018, do we have the real India? Do you meet any Indian who is actually a real Indian? 2018, real Indian Anybody who is a real Indian? Who are in 2018? Complete Britishers? They are not complete Britishers. They did not change us completely because there was a constant resistance. We were resisting, we were fighting back. We are trying to avoid that colonial power, that alienation. So the result is that fight between two different cultures results in the third culture. And here we are no more Indian. We are in third culture. In the words of Baba, he calls it hybrid. He said that take it in a positive way, we are better now. Earlier we were just Indians. Now we are neither Indian nor British, but we are the mix of both of them and we are technically better. But the question is that in this development, have we lost anything? Have we missed anything? This is a mango tree. The mango tree has a normal system of enhancing its branches, going upwards. That's the natural development. But then you plant a mango tree and you make some wall. You put some artificial barrier there. And the mango tree is forced to develop this side and that side. Because it still, it wants to develop. Still it wants to have the growth. But it cannot go to the upside because you have made some artificial barrier. We changed the natural development of this tree. And we made it develop itself like this. And this is how we played with the genetics of that tree. This has happened to us. How many of you remember last time you had a lecture on moralities? Moralities pe lecture, schools mein, ethics, third or fourth tak hote Have you ever seen in some higher level studies, somebody teaching you moralities that instead of being rich, being successful, be a good man? If somebody says that there is a coaching class and they teach you how to be a good person, how to be very aesthetic, how to be very cultured, will you join it? No, because we have been given a new thought to be successful at any cost. And our hero has become very Machiavelli. Earlier we had heroes like Muhammad Sahib, Ram, Lakshman, those who were sacrificing things for others. Now we have heroes like Machiavelli, Faustus, those who can compromise anything to achieve their targets. This is how we have been changed. So we're going to discuss this thing called post-colonial identity crisis, post-colonial dislocation, why the word English becomes something different. English is English and Hindi is just Hindi. What's the difference in English? Who made you say it? Why? Okay, just ask. I'm asking a very simple question. What is this? Lord Rama? Lord Rama? No. Okay. Krishna, do you write Rama in Hindi? You write Ram in Hindi. For Ram, you can simply write R-A-M. 
they made you take the names of god in their way they pronounce it rama and now we write in english lord rama lord is not a word for god we have a word for god lord is actually someone who is powerful who is leader who governs you in english parliament they have house of lords why do we use the word lord for our gods and if they are gods then what is the actual meaning of lord mount betten was he a god in india this is how we how we have been given the language by the colonizers and this becomes the first point here we're going to discuss this the colonialism concept how we were colonized on the basis of caste creed culture race issues and how after resistance we try to locate ourselves in world scenario we question the development of indian world scenario we question the loss that we have gone through the imperialist expansion of europe into the rest of the world during the last 400 years in which a dominant imperial or center carried on a relationship of control and influence that's the thing they control us they influence us its margin over colonies this relationship tended to extend to social pedagogical economic political cultural exchanges so technically they took the entire control in their hands we our cultures were compromised our thought process social issues then education finance and political condition everything got compromised during the colonization or the timing of colonialism now how we just find the change the last lines are here <coughs> we have the exotic otherness and the racial inferiority why do we have this fair and lovely system in india do you need any beauty product to qualify net or you just need your brain and hard work then why these advertisements they tell us that you if you have this winter cream summer cream fairness cream then only you are successful then only you are qualified why they are relating beauty to success they can simply relate beauty to happiness that now you are beautiful you are happy it's okay if you want to celebrate your beauty it's okay it can be celebrated for happiness but the countries like india especially the third world countries where success is something very big very serious they are relating beauty with success be beautiful be successful there's this concept we have been given exotic otherness the very word white to be white that became a very important notion in our lives this racial inferiority we have been called the land of jugglers snake charmers the blacks the browns and whites they were superior they were better than us so why we have been made to think that we are inferior they made us our stay away of their lives Have you seen the movie based on E.M. Foster's Passes to India? If you have read it, the Britishers they have a club where it is clearly mentioned that dogs and Indians are not allowed. What kind of comparison is this? That dogs and Indians are not allowed. This was their attitude towards us. Now, after the change, now the conditions are changed. now we are independent but are we actually independent are we are simply clueless about our identity and are trying to locate ourselves in most of the conditions people they read different worlds the first world literature second world literature and then question comes the third world <coughs> the third world literature deals with the countries who were colonized and got freedom after 1960s 70s or during 80s these are the countries who have late capitalism those who could not get proper development but in post colonial terms if we go in the words of friends fena friends fena calls calls uh, he calls it the lost world we are the lost world we are not the real world we have been directed we have been governed we have been given the direction remember this thing friends fena it's a famous writer f r e n t z 
F A N O N, friends phenom. He has given the word the lost world. So we are no more the third world. We are third world in economic way. That we are the late capitalist countries. We have later developments, the developments which were not given proper chances to flourish in early ages. But actually, we are the countries, we are visionless countries. We have lost our cultures, we have lost our roots, and moreover, we are directionless. In Delhi, what kind of culture you find? Mixed culture? Do we have pure villages in India? We do not have pure villages left anymore in India. The villages have been changed now. Our sub a global village ban gaya. And this is that what we have lost. Can we just celebrate our birthday without cakes? Yeah, we can celebrate our birthdays without cake if there is some bet. Kya jab bina cake hai celebrate karo. But if you have even a smaller feeling that yaar aaj cake nahi khaya, mera birthday tha. Then we were colonized because what I remember in our early ages when the cakes were not that much popular in our area, we celebrated birthdays with puri sabji khir and bhagwan ki puja and mostly gulab jamun. What's the difference? How cake is related to birthday only? Like people they eat it on certain occasions, but why birthday it has become a rule. We are following them. Why we are following them? Because there is a concept called cultural hegemony. There was a question in net exam. Cultural hegemony term has been used in post-colonial sense by. And a lot of people, those who call themselves net experts, they gave the answer Antonin Gramsci. They didn't know that Gramsci has actually coined the term in Marxist way, not in post-colonial way. In post-colonial references, cultural hegemony has been used by Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak. Cultural hegemony has been used by Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak. I'll be giving you the notes after the class. Can the subaltern speak exactly? But it's not the subaltern where she's talking about cultural hegemony. Cultural hegemony in post-colonial sense. That's why I keep telling you, read the question properly before you answer. 90% people answered Antony Gramsci, those who had any idea. Otherwise, 80% people have no idea about what is cultural hegemony. Ask yourself if you ever had any idea about this. So just imagine, in post-colonial sense, it is Gayatri Chakrata Spivak, and hegemony simply talks about the domination the rule of the powerful class. If somebody is powerful, they will govern you. They will have direct influence on you. If you're living in a colony where there are 10 people, they are very rich and they belong to a different, <coughs> different religion and then 80 people are actually poor and they belong to different religion. The result would be that these 80 people will celebrate the celebrations of those 10 people because they are rich from Marxist point of view. Their fashion will become the fashion of the world. You must have heard the celebration called Halloween. Halloween ka koi matlab hai cultural reference hai amare Hindu religion ya Islam se ya Sikhism se. Halloween is not related culturally to our things. Why it's being promoted? And we say that we are good man. We pose na. Hum acting karte hain, hum log hain. Then why on Halloween we want to look like vampires? Us din jaan ke devilish dikhne ka kyu karte hain? What kind of feeling is this and what is the psychology behind this? Because it is being celebrated by them. So we are celebrating it. And the very word here is empire. E capital. If you remember I gave you the reference earlier also in the class. E stands for Europe. A society or the world which is completely governed by European ideas, European culture, European styles. Just think about it. What is the influence of Europe in our countries? On the financial grounds, they decide everything. They govern us, they control us, and if they want, they can change our prime minister. Aram se kar sakte. Sub funds, sub paisa. 
वर्ल्ड बैंक घूम कर सबको 